So welcome back to another Audio Apocalypse mini set review here. We got nine cards this time around, a bunch of new dual class cards. My first five star card of the uh, review season. And kicking it off, we've got Priest and Rogue. We're finally fusing together the two thievery classes with Plagiarizer here, a new three mana four three pirate. It's uh, Battle Cry. You get a copy of the top card of your opponent's deck. So we love getting uh, cards from our opponents for both Thief, uh, Rogue, and Thief Priest. You've got Tess shenanigans you can pull off. Priest has still that like Harvester of Envy package you can use to enable this. And then also you're just getting some some nice information as well out of this card, I would say. Uh, being able to see what your opponent's about to top that could actually change your plays. Maybe not if you like play this on turn three and don't have any other decisions left, but maybe late in the game, if you have some spare mana after playing the plagiarizer, you might say, oh man, they're going to draw um, an awesome removal card. I better not play a big threat or they're going to draw a bunch of damage. Oh my God, I got to be careful. I got to heal up here because I know they're getting burst damage or, oh, they're going to get their combo piece. I need to do something to disrupt that in some way or another, you know, play, play a card that, that limits them somehow. So um, that recon, the reconnaissance value on plagiarizer here is not to be scoffed at. I think that could actually be rather useful in some cases, while this is still, of course, just generating you value and thievery stuff like you normally like. From a stat standpoint, this isn't, you know, great tempo necessarily or anything, but you're not sacrificing much for the upside on this battle cry. There's also some pirate synergies, which could technically be explored a little bit in rogue as well. So a handful of different approaches for this card to find success. Now that said, I still don't actually think this card's like a home run or great or anything. All of those are kind of limited upsides. You know, those aren't archetypes that are really shining right now or anything. So I think the plagiarizer currently looks merely good, but you know, there's a little bit of latent potential there. Maybe a thief priest shows up and right now priest is a little bit more uh, control even thievy and thief rogue's not very good but just keep an eye on this one basically he's he's definitely got a few different ways to find a home moving on here to deafen another dual class for rogue and priest one mana spell this time around shadow spell and it silences a minion and then if it's comboed it will also deal two damage to it uh, so this is kind of like an earth shock if you guys haven't seen earth shock in a while but a lot like earth shock and uh, a little bit better even with the two damage eh, a little bit conditional with a combo but that's not usually going to be too big of an ask i don't think for a card like this one so also some combo synergies for rogue we've still seen that combo package floating around in rogue a little bit this would actually be a pretty cheap way to enable some of the combo setup for rogue which could be nice and then also shadow synergies for priest to keep an eye on i think more importantly though is just the base utility of this card it actually looks really good to me in a meta where we have so many of these like little annoying death rattles and egg cards and all these sorts of things in like unholy death knight uh this is a great answer to that this is a really cheap way to just tidy up the opponent's annoying things and their annoying death rattles which i think makes this card look really good i think you could play this early in the game on something small and feel pretty good about it that you just kind of got rid of it and don't have to deal with that problem anymore and then I also think you can play this on the, in the late game on really big, awesome death rattles and big, crazy stuff as well and still feel pretty good about it. Also good um, against uh, Divine Shield minions, which we see a lot of. So to me, this looks like a really good staple early game removal card that probably both Rogue and Priest can utilize well. This looks super good. And then next up for Rogue here, we have the one hit wonder, a two mana, two, one undead with rush and combo gain poisonous. So uh, really cheap removal card here, assuming your opponent doesn't have any annoying taunts in the way this can probably get through and, and deal with some uh, some pretty meaty threats. You know, opponent plays a big old uh, gigantotem or something. You just slam the one hit wonder and it's it's dealt with pretty easily. Also, some of those combo synergies we talked about for Rogue. We're seeing this critical mass of combo cards come along that might finally get there for the combo Rogue package when they've preferred other things instead. More miracle and concoction style packages have currently taken priority, but maybe enough of these solid building blocks in the combo pool will actually make the difference. And I mean, this is pretty straightforward, just like super good, super efficient removal. The combo limitation is probably not much of an ask in Rogue. I don't think you have to get crazy greedy on this for it to feel good. Just like killing a 4-4 or a 5-5 sometimes is going to be awesome. And then occasionally it'll be even bigger and better. This is the kind of card that maybe you don't always run in your deck, just depending on the meta and matchups you're expecting to see, because if it's only three threes out there, maybe this just doesn't feel worth it, uh, but probably feels great to like generate or discover in many cases as well, where you just need some cheap removal. And it's like, oh, this lines up perfectly. This is absolutely fantastic for me. So I think this card just has a lot of utility to consider and looks pretty darn solid.
So let's move on here to Shaman and Warrior and Jam Session, a card that I think is completely bonkers. This card looks insane. Two mana spell, it's a fire spell, which of course is super relevant for Warrior, but technically also sometimes relevant for Shaman. And it gives a friendly minion plus three, plus three. So great buff there uh, on a two mana spell, but it also deals one damage to all other minions which don't sleep on the impact of that as sometimes a defensive play, just whittling away some divine shields, clearing up some, some various 1-1 one -one tokens, uh, but also perhaps more importantly for warrior, activating your own enrage synergies. So damaging your own minions can, uh, you know, proc all kinds of onboard effects, uh, but can also set up, you know, to buff with your with your weapon. And this is like the perfect dream card for Enrage, Fire Enrage Warrior in particular, because of that. Fire synergies, Whirlwind Enrage synergies, and just stats and buffs on board to help increase the survivability of some of your key minions. So this is like a triple threat, perfect synergy for Enrage Warrior, a deck that has really been just out of meta relevance for a while now it's like one of those that's pretty good kind of tier two ish and people play it really successfully at certain ranks hasn't quite gotten there from a popularity standpoint hasn't quite gotten to the top of the meta but this could be the kind of card that just that just nudges it over the top basically because i think this card just fits so dang well and fits so darn strong like this plus anim extractor this plus imbued axe is like the perfect trio of just making crazy big things and i think could push fire and rage warrior from sort of low tier two to a tier one deck for sure this card does so so much as for shaman i see a little less relevance for jam session i mean a 3-3 buff isn't terrible uh there are some overload synergies here which we didn't talk about overload in the context of warrior but i think they'll happily pay that overload cost because of everything that jam session can set up and enable so not a huge downside kind of making this card cost three but still allowing you to cheat it in early at uh, two with some other big plays potentially. So ultimately less relevant for Shaman, maybe still okay, super strong for Warrior. This card looks completely perfect. Might finally be the missing piece of the puzzle for that deck to become really scary good. So moving on here, we've got the Backstage Bouncer. He's a frog and he's a bouncer. He bounces, that's funny. He's a four mana, four, five beast with taunt and battle cry transform a friendly minion into a copy of this. So uh, here at a base level, basically you could take some small junk minion, a one, one or something and give it a giant buff here on the back of the backstage bouncer, turning that into a four or five taunt. I think that's actually a pretty good play sometimes. Like a shaman has a totem laying around or a one, one piranha that didn't have much to do. And the backstage bouncer says, hey, we're gonna make you relevant and big on board and getting two, four or five bodies. That's gonna feel like a big play. Shaman also has things uh, like uh, Lady Vosh, which uh, if you try to transform her, she's gonna say, nah, my effect says I'm not getting transformed, but you're just gonna get an extra four or five beasts on board and protect your Vosh with some cool transform slash evolve synergy stuff there as well in Shaman. And then finally in Warrior, I think this card's actually pretty cool as well because of all the various buffs it might be able to get, whether that's through Black Rock and Roll or maybe some Anna, Anima Extractor shenanigans, you might be able to make this minion significantly bigger especially menagerie warrior this is a beast which is a good fit for that deck doesn't have a lot of great beast options especially as kind of late game payoffs this might become one if this becomes an eight nine after a black rock and roll uh you could take a small minion that was kind of stuck in hand some random little you know mistake or whatever and suddenly turn that into a really big taunt also taunt synergies here for taunt warriors as well so this card has a, a handful of different ways to actually approach things and still feel like a good relevant play so i don't know if it's going to work in all of those decks may not pack enough punch in any individual deck but you have to imagine in one of those this is going to so, sort of slot in and, and make some sense so i am hopeful for it the most in menagerie warrior as, as a possibility i think it's got some really sensible lines there so i think this card's got a really good chance to be good so finally for shaman here we have the remixed totem carver another remixed card uh three and three two is going to summon a different totem depending on uh, what he's changed into the loud totem carver will summon a stereo totem blazing will summon flame tongue 
Bluesy will summon a Manatite Totem, and Karaoke will summon a Jukebox Totem, which on average means these are about uh, two mana Totem summons. Manatite Totem, technically a three mana card, but these days probably kind of feels like a two mana Totem. I wouldn't be surprised if that could get changed to two uh, pretty easily. So let's say on average, a two mana value. And uh, I, I, we talked up yesterday about how much I love Totem Shaman. I think the uh, the new Jukebox Totems is gonna be a good fit for Totem Shaman. Interestingly though, I'm a little less convinced here by the remixed Totem Carver. I don't think this slots quite as well into Totem Shaman as we see it today, which of course that's where it's going to succeed if it succeeds anywhere. And the reason for that is that the three mana spot is much more restricted in Totem Shaman, and um, I don't think this surpasses either of the three mana cards, which are currently Grand Totem Eyesore and Party Favor Totem. And this lives in a very similar space to Party Favor Totem in particular, which is going wide on board with some totem summons. But importantly, this is only summoning you one totem ever. The Party Favor Totem is summoning you three totems very often, uh, with infuse or at least two even when not infused and that's important because the totem shaman deck has these payoffs with thing from below and gigantotem and really even like totemic uh, evidence as well that all care about the number of totems that you summon and i think this is going to be a step backwards a little bit in the three mana spot is this card good enough to change up the curve a little bit and run an extra three drop I'm not so convinced. I know that uh, Tuscar Totemic was a really good card back in its era, and this harkens back to that in a lot of ways, probably even in some more consistent ways as well. But um, I, that was an era long, long gone, and I don't think the sort of 3-2 bonus on this card is significant or relevant enough to make it better than just getting more totems down faster. So... I, I maybe it could still make the cut. I, it's not a bad card by any means. It's getting some bodies down. You know, it still gets you a totem in play. I will say the flame tongue totem is a little bit awkward here because the blade, the totem carver itself is always going to be next to the flame tongue totem on the left. So that does limit like face damage a little bit off the flame tongue. You could still like trade off on the right and roll up like normal, but still some limitations there. And um, I, I guess I'm just far more hesitant on this one than I was the jukebox totem, uh, jukebox totem itself. I don't think it fits in quite as well. And without Totem Shaman driving this one, I, it just doesn't get played in anything else, I don't think either. So uh, perhaps a, a small chance, but I think some limited use cases here for the remixed Totem Carver. So moving on over to Mage and Hunter here, we've got Star Power, a five mana arcane spell. This is a big old removal card. It's gonna deal five damage to a random enemy minion, and then it's gonna repeat this with one less damage. So normally that's five into four, which is nine, into three, which is 12, into two, which is 14, into one, which is 15. So this is kind of a 15 damage uh, clear here, if you break down the math, which does scale really well with uh, arcane spell damage and hunter, or just regular spell damage, of course, too. Uh, making each of those numbers bigger by one. So pretty significant upgrade here with Arcane spell damage. If you do like play this in Arcane Hunter and buff it up a little bit there or happen to have some, some spell damage on board. So um, that is absolutely going to resolve a lot of mid game boards, even if it does sometimes whiff a little bit and you like hit, you know, a three, three with your five damage and it feels a little wasted. Very often that's gonna be enough to, to, to work through a lot of boards. You might whiff occasionally and, and, you know, miss the big thing the first couple rounds and feel bad. But I think most of the time you're gonna feel satisfied with star power, particularly if you have um, any spell damage adds, it's, it's definitely gonna clean stuff up in the mid game. Now, the question is though, do either of these classes need that? Is this something they're gonna be looking to run? I have a lot bigger question there. Like, is the mid game board clear relevant to either of these decks? Is Hunter trying to be more aggressive? In other words, is this something they really need to have as a backup plan or are they just pushing a bit more initiative, pushing a bit more pressure, trying to get face damage through as opposed to just spending a lot of mana and probably an entire turn on something like star power? have concerns there and then for mage do they even need this do they have better access to stalls or removals i think so mage doesn't necessarily need a card like this to clean up they have so many other tools at their um at their disposal so for me I, this kind of does fall in that space where i don't know if anybody really needs this card i think it's one of those it's going to feel great sometimes when you discover it in a pinch it's gonna be like oh yeah that's perfect that's going to answer this board but as for making the cut in a main deck i i don't think people will need this it's in that mana spot that's just a little bit more expensive not to mention hunter actually already has access to shell shot 
uh shell shot is that what it's called shell yeah shell shot which is basically the same card light it starts at three uh it's not an arcane spell so that's an important difference for arcane hunter but this is much more flexible it helps you get it down earlier probably handles the scarier early game boards whereas star power might just be too big of a commitment a little bit too late so if you were looking for a little bit of a stabilizer tool shell shot might just offer you that and you might not need uh, star power now these are in different rotations so eventually star power would be alone but i still don't i don't see this one standing out a lot for hunter so fine card just not one i think it's run a bunch so next up for mage and hunter we have the costumed singer a one mana two one and it reads at the end of your turn draw a secret so uh this is basically going to guarantee that you draw a secret you play this on one particularly in hunter you're going to have yourself a turn to play off of that secret that could be really nice but even if you don't play it right away just increasing the density of secrets in your deck basically can be great for a uh a secret synergy deck which currently we don't really have in in hunter or mage but that doesn't mean this card's never going to work you just kind of put this in your back pocket as soon as a deck that cares at all about secrets comes along or maybe in wild format this could be insane for secret mage too i would imagine uh, but even in standard, as soon as a secret deck comes along, this card is just there waiting to be really, really strong. So we might not see this one for a while. It might be a year before we see the costume singer in action. But the, the potential for this card is quite clear to me. It's a very consistent draw engine for what can be a very strong synergy piece. And we've certainly seen secret decks work in the past. I mean, all you have to do is really look at uh, Peasant. Remember Peasant, this guy? Uh, a one mana two one this drew at the start of your turn and this card still got played a ton which always surprised me by the way but uh it just becomes such a threat and the costume singer you know you're getting the draw right this one was conditional you didn't always get it to work but this time it is gonna work and yeah that draws you any cards which can be an upside but it can also be an upside to tutor a secret specifically for a secret deck so costume singer just looks like it's got the potential to be really really good again don't expect to see this one anytime soon we don't have decks that enable this just yet but it's gonna be good at some point as soon as the secret deck comes online this card is gonna be a fantastic engine for it and then finally here with mage we've got the remix dispenso bot he is a vending machine a four mana four four mech of course like all the other remix cards he's gonna gain an extra effect in your hands there's the mystery dispenso bot which will give you two random mage secrets uh, so again, maybe some, some secret stuff there. If you need extra secrets to proc certain secret synergies, that's a possibility in normal play. I think that's going to feel kind of expensive and maybe not all that good. The merch dispenso bot's going to give you two random mechs, and this is a mech itself as well. So that could be a bit of a mech generator for a mech mage. Don't think that's necessarily going to be great either though, particularly because you might have to wait four turns for that, or three turns or whatever to roll into the, 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 the right uh, mech to get your mechs in a mech mage. That's not going to feel consistent at all when you want to play this on curve. Uh, next up is the money dispenso bot, which is going to give you two coins. I also just want a vending machine that gives me money. Like what? That sounds amazing. And then finally the chilling dispenso bot is going to give you two random frost spells. So basically, uh, four mana four four that just generates you stuff, and um, given that it's random stuff, I, you know the quality of this is going to be pretty low on average. It's not even discover, so you know we love discover cards because we get to pick things that fit game plans, that fit moments and game states, and we know they're going to be useful for us. This giving us random stuff is just value for the sake of value, which does not seem very good. There is one angle for this card that's kind of interesting to always keep in the back of your mind though which is that there is this one that gives you two coins and having access to coins can sometimes enable shenanigans and combos and otks that wouldn't otherwise be possible so you could have some kind of crazy combo deck that's just saving this until it hits the coin option and then it plays it to get those coins and that sets up whatever weird win condition or whatever uh that said you know that feels really rough to do with a four mana overhead on that that's going to be really challenging to find lines where it's safe to play that and line these up you might have to wait too long for it might be hard to weave into turns while you're staying alive and dealing with your opponent's stuff etc so i don't really think that's an angle that's going to make this card good just something to park in the back of your mind it might be a possibility anytime we have a meta where that's uh, necessary or no other good ways to get like mana cheat or coins out of something that said probably would be very niche and like off meta and meme more than realistic just because of all the setup and time required to make this work so ultimately i don't i don't really love a lot about the re remix dispenso bot here value for the sake of value just doesn't seem great 
uh, particularly when it's this slow and this random, so probably not a great card. Plagiarizer is a three-star card. Deafen is a four-star card. One Hit Wonder is a four-star card. Jam Session is a five-star card. Backstage Bouncer is a four-star card. Remixed Totem Carver is a three-star card. Star Power is a two-star card. Costumed Singer is a four-star card. Remixed Dispenso Bot is a one-star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this review. I think we're uh, gonna have one more day of mini set cards to talk about, and then soon we'll be playing these suckers. But what do you think about these cards? Do you love Jam Session as much as me? I want to hear all those thoughts and more down in the comments. Thanks so much as always for watching, and until next time, game on.